What was the weirdest date you've ever been on? Story one. I once went on a date with a very nice guy who we will call Alan, a few years younger than I was at the time. We had been on a few casual dates and he invited me to a show he was playing with another local musician at a coffee house. I showed up and the other musician was a much older guy, let's call him Ned, who I had gone out with once before realizing he was A, my dad's age and B, still married to and living with his estranged wife and their children. Despite the generally bad vibe I got from the situation, I stayed for the show and chatted with them both politely. I got introduced to Ned's wife and children and was hoping to make my gracious exit when Alan invited me to go to a local bar for drinks. I quickly accepted and said goodbye to Ned, who then said, Oh, you guys are going to the bar. I'll meet you there in 15 minutes. Not sure how to respond. Alan and I kind of looked at each other and just said, Okay. We get to the bar, and I go to walk inside, and Ned accosts me at the door saying, If I didn't know any better... I'd think Alan was trying to set us up. I really didn't want to make things any worse than they already were. So I told him, well, here's the thing. Alan and I are kind of on a date right now. Ned tries to play it off cool by replying, if you're on a date, why did you guys invite me? Thankfully, Alan arrived, and I was hoping Ned would realize he wasn't really invited. Narrator, Ned did not realize he was not invited. We wound up running into some of Alan's friends, a bunch of college-age guys, inside of the bar. As if things couldn't get any more awkward, our waitress told the group, Oh my God, it's so cute that you kids let your dad hang out with you. Ned still couldn't get the hint that he was not welcome and proceeded to tell the whole table about how depressed he was living with his estranged wife and how hard it was to date when he's living with her and their kids still. I've seen episodes of Seinfeld that were less awkward than this. Alan tries to be a nice guy and get me out of the extremely awkward situation by saying he was hungry and that we should go get some pizza down the street while Ned was in the bathroom. Unfortunately for us, he caught us leaving and said he was hungry too. He literally followed us to our third location of the night. Ned, if you're reading this, you're a cock block. To this day, I still don't know if he was that dense or if he was purposely trying to ruin my date. If you're still reading this, thank you very much. For your visualization purposes, please imagine Drew Carey as Ned and Michael Sarah as Alan. Feel free to use any busty blonde actress for me, LOL. Also, I'm still friends with both these guys, and I've actually done a whole stand-up routine in front of them about the third wheel date. We still don't talk about it. Story two. Dated this nice English woman for two years. She was extremely beautiful and funny. Now, we usually go and get some pizza down the road from where I lived at. We would usually just go together, but on this particular day, her BFF wanted to come along, so we let her. She also brought her BF. So, yeah, I was on a double date. Now, fats forward about 30 minutes into the double date. We were eating our pizza, having fun, and laughing at all of my GF's voice impressions. It was going great until my GF's BFF BF got up and told her, I have to go, I have a lot of videos to edit, and I have hate you to do. I said... It's no problem, man. Go do what you got to do. He smiled and said, see you guys later. It was great to meet him. You might be thinking where the heck is the best part. Well, here it is. His GF gets up and gets on one knee. Now I was shocked. My GF was shocked and so was he. She stood there and said, Ryan, I love you so much. And these last few years, it's been such a great experience with you. I would really love for you to be mine forever. We've been through it all together and I would not want to spend the rest of my life with you. He started to cry and sob. I was thought he is extremely happy and can't get a word out. He lifts up his head and says, So, after you cheat on me with my brother, have close relationship with my best friend about one week ago, you want to marry me. Needless to say, I was dead-ass shocked and stunned. Story three. She started out by telling me that she used to be bulimic in high school and now has a binge eating disorder. Then she told me how her ex left her house two months prior and pretty much ghosted her. I was like, oh shoot, that's horrible. She then told me about her other ex that she did cola with that actually used to work at a restaurant where my roommates worked. It was my first date ever, so I was like, okay, weird. The icing on the cake. She then told me she was a love witch, and she practiced love magic. I was completely confused and said, oh, my roommate was Wiccan in high school. An hour later, we decide to leave. She hugs me by my car and rubs her hand down my chest, tells me she had to go feed her dog, and left. Story four. I met someone on an online dating service. Cuff, plenty offish. I was still pretty new to this internet dating thing in the mid-2000s, but she looked good in her picture and she sounded kind of fun. Before we could meet IRL, however, she asked for the date, time, and location of my birth so that she could do an astrological chart of our compatibility. Good news. She told me we were very sexually compatible. This was looking better and better. On the day of, I pick her up outside her apartment. She's standing at the curb, holding an obviously used kitty litter scoop. We have to stop by the pet store so I can return this. Okay, I say watching bits of kitty litter fall onto the floor of my car. This is kind of weird, but okay. Off to the pet store to watch her argue with the sales clerk. Eventually, we finally get that done, so the date can officially start now. The plan was, since it was a first date, to go for a walk by the bay. 
San Diego, and get to know each other a bit. But first, we stop by Jamba Juice to pick up a smoothie for the walk, since we are being all healthy and stuff. And since I suggested it, I figured I would be paying. She proceeds to order a smoothie in the extra large size with at least two of every supplement, including double wheatgrass. Total price was over $25. I didn't even know that was possible. I mean, at some point, it just becomes absurd. Sure, why not order twice the super energy boost and twice the calming boost at the same time? Makes sense. I was starting to get a sinking feeling that something wasn't quite right with this woman. I mean, yes, the whole astrology thing was a big flashing red sign, but I had been blinded by the possibility of close relationship. Lots of high compatibility close relationship. During the promised idyllic walk by the bay, my date, over the course of two hours, told me more than I ever knew, or cared to know about karaoke, and also about her four ex-husbands, and how much she really wanted to marry it again, and soon. I think that it was at this point in the date when I seriously started to wonder whether there really is such a thing as free will, or whether we are just destined to follow the path that has been preordained for us. I was just beginning to think, well, this is my life now. But then, miraculously, the date somehow came to an end. I drove her home, thanked my lucky stars, and then proceeded to fake my own death. Just kidding. I think she figured out that while I certainly had enough money to buy her mega jamba juices on occasion, I probably didn't have the financial profile she was looking for. I never heard from her again, thank goodness. Story five. I dated a guy whose mother was a physician. I was in medical school at the time, and we were performing brain dissections. He wanted to meet me for lunch and peek in on our lab. It was a morning lab, and when I got out, he was standing there. He got a giant waft of the preservative that the brain tissue is kept in as the doors opened. He could also see the brains that were being refrigerated after the lab, sitting about five feet behind me. He passed out. The awkward part, though, was that he didn't know what to say when he had 20 medical students standing around him. He was so embarrassed, he walked, said a quick goodbye, walked away. From the door, I could see he jumped on the first bus that came to stop outside of our lab. Good times. Story six. Met a guy on Bumble. We agreed to meet at a local wine bar where his friend's band was playing. We're talking as his friends set up. So we go for a walk so he can get some scenery shots as he's an amateur photographer. That's when the one-upmanship started. Whatever skill interest fact about myself I mentioned, he had to respond that he had better. Finally, we go back to the wine bar. When we get back, a lot of his friends have arrived. He doesn't introduce me to any one of them, and when they ask if I'm his girlfriend, he's quick to say no. The band starts playing, and it's all experimental, improvisational jazz. And then they invited him to join them to sit in. That's how I discovered he did political spoken word stream of consciousness poetry using an alter ego. In between his poems, he wandered the bar talking to everyone while I sat by myself and his guy friends tried to pick me up. His female friends all gave me the evil eye. The bartender gave me a free glass of wine because she said I looked like I was on the worst date ever. Finally, I'd had enough and planned to walk out. When he came over and said the least he could do is walk me to my car, which he did, and then hugged me goodbye before walking away to go back to the bar. The weirdest part is he texted me like a day later to say he thought we had great chemistry and should do that again. Story 7. This story is really embarrassing. I've never told anyone. Here goes. Back in 1989 or so, I was working as a third shift security guard in some office building. The place where I worked had a beautiful plant-filled atrium with lots of glass and trees. It was nighttime, so there was no sunlight coming through the glass. And the lighting was, well, more for effect than visibility. There was this attractive girl working there who I said hi to on occasion. On my last day of work before quitting, I decided to ask her out. She said yes and gave me her contact info. A few days went by. Then it was time for the date. So I drove to her house to pick her up. I entered her apartment. Her roommate, I thought, let me in. Have you ever seen a fluorescent light that was hard on your eyes? Unnaturally bright, bluish, flickering, really harsh? Well, that was the light in her living room. So even though it was bright, it was sort of hard to see. From the front door, you could see upstairs to two rooms. The roommate disappeared upstairs. I saw the two of them walking around up there, but just glimpses. Then one of them comes downstairs and says, okay, I'm ready. But there was a problem. It was the roommate. What was going on? Did I mistake the roommate for the girl from work? Is this really the girl from work and I'm not recognizing her? I mean, they did look sort of alike. What's going on? Unsure of myself and being a socially awkward 19 yo, I decided to just go with it. Because maybe I'm wrong. We got in the car and went to Chili's. On the way there, at dinner, she didn't say a word. Not a word. So I decided to cut the evening short and take her home. Looking back, I'm now about 99% sure the girl from work chickened out or felt bad about telling me no or something and was now not sure how to get out of it. And the roommate decided to go in her place, I guess, for the free dinner. But it was such an awkward situation that neither of us was able to create any meaningful conversation. Story 8. I met a girl online. I could tell she was overweight from her pictures, but that's not necessarily a deal breaker. I was super lonely at the time, and she asked me to dinner and ice cream, so I was excited. I get to her house, and she comes out to meet me on a mobility scooter. 
Her pictures must have been from several years prior because she had got to the point where she was so big she couldn't walk. She takes a look at my car and gets mad that it doesn't have a wheelchair lift. So how am I supposed to take her out? I should have just left, but I felt bad and asked if she just wanted to watch a movie at her place and order food. She lived with her parents, who chain-smoked and argued in the same room we were trying to watch the movie the entire time. She also tried to shove my hand down her pants in full view of them. We ordered an extra large pizza and two two liters of cola. When it arrived, she looked confused and said, Didn't you get anything for yourself? She proceeded to down all of it on her own and followed it up with a tub of ice cream. After the date was over, she kept texting me every couple days asking if I would bring her food. I eventually just blocked her number. Story 9. I was in the Air Force for 14 years. Tough to develop a social network whilst living out of a suitcase. I relied on online dating to meet girls. But this was before Tinder, Bumble, etc. One girl met up with me, had decent conversation, let me pay for a nice dinner. The proceeded to tell me she was married and asked if it'd be interested in buying some of her Advocar products. She admitted to using online dating to build a client base, and her husband was cool with it. I didn't even get a free sample. One girl had red flags going off left and right. The two biggest ones were first when she started talking about how great the military healthcare system, TRICARE, was, and how her lifelong heart condition was so expensive, and that she would love to marry a military guy so she could get into those benefits. I bounced out pretty quick after that, but she literally followed me home, saw where I lived, went to Target and bought me a little care package with a pillow, a blanket, some shirts, and a card. I texted her to come pick it up and lose my number. One girl told me she was five weeks pregnant and started crying because she thought I was the one after just one date. Of course, she told me after I paid the check. Bummer cause she was cute, smart, and motivated in life. She turned out okay, though. We stayed friends. Story 10. Maybe the third date with this guy from a very straight-laced Mormon, sheltered upbringing. I have a bit more colorful past. I wanted to try the only Filipino restaurant in town, and he reluctantly agreed. We walk into the reception area and don't see anyone at the little desk, but are a bunch of people running around the restaurant, so I stick my head through door and wave at a waiter. A minute later, a guy comes up to the desk and asks if we came for dinner, and I think, isn't that why people come to restaurants in the evening? But tell him yes, and we are lead to a table. Half of the tables are pushed aside, and makeshift stage and lights have been set up in their place. When the waiter comes to take our order, I ask about the stage and he says there's a big dance competition next week and their local crew is practicing tonight. Turns out it's not just a dance competition, it's a drag dance and lip sync competition. It was awesome and my date had so many questions. Are those? How do they? Where do they? Story 11. A friend of mine asked me to a movie that I really wanted to see. I thought it was like a friend date. We go, we each pay our way, have a good time, no romance. Well, no, he thought something entirely different. Nothing bad, just awkward. This is the story of how my oldest friend stole my first date. So he pays for my ticket, disregarding my protest that I wanted to pay my own way. Buys me popcorn, though I insisted on paying for it. Since he got the tickets, it would have balanced out. Tried to hold my hand during the movie. I cringed away from him and busied myself with shoveling as much popcorn into my face as possible. Then after the movie, I said I was going to call my folks for a ride, and he said, nah, his parents were going to pick us up. We were 15 at the time. So while we're waiting, some people we know from school show up, including a guy I had a crush on, who actually clapped my friend on the back as like congratulations, I guess. It was weird, just really awkward. Then his dad and stepmom finally show up to take me home, and he ignores all of my signals in order to ask me out again. Right there in the back seat with his parents up front pretending not to listen. So much pressure. I said no though, but my lordy, that was awkward. Then like a month later, he tries again to ask me out, and I insisted that he invite the rest of our friend group too. Story 12, I met a girl on Tinder. We chatted for a few days and we made plans to go out for drinks after I got off work. When I got home, I thought I would have plenty of time to watch some TV and get ready. I feel asleep and woke up one hour after I was supposed to meet her. I called apologizing while getting dressed and running to the car I was burrowing. I convinced her to wait for me. The conversation was kind of stale and the bar was crowded. She said, let's go for a drive. After 20 minutes, she got a flat tire and I had to fix it for her because she did not know how. But in the end, she gave me a BJ in her car. 610 might do it again. Story 13. I used POF, plenty of fish, once. I was kind of lonely, and I'm pretty introverted, so I decided to try online dating. I matched with a girl, we chatted for a few days, and everything seemed to be going super well, so I asked her out, picked a date in a very vegetarian-friendly place, and she was, well, you guess it, a vegetarian. So before we go out, I'm nervous as hell and look up some good stuff to talk about on a first date. What she was going to school for, any siblings, what do they do? All kinds of generic questions that could carry on a conversation assuming I wasn't talking to a rock. So I pick her up, we exchange a hug and some small talk as I drive to the place to eat. We get there, and to avoid any post-meal awkwardness about the bill, I offer up front to cover it very politely, and she accepts. 
So now that I'm sitting across from her and I can actually see her while we speak, I start noticing how she's slightly shaking, which becomes more noticeable as food comes out and I can see food falling off her fork. Now I'm a pretty generic white dude, six feet, about 180 pounds, not in great shape, but not too bad. And I've been told I'm attractive, so I'm kind of taken aback by how nervous she seems around me. Every question I asked was met with one word responses and barely any eye contact. I honestly felt like she thought I was a murderer or something along those lines. We finish up eating, I pay. She seems a bit more friendly, but not so much. I drop her off at her house. It was way too awkward, and there was really no chemistry, so I didn't bother trying to go for a kiss. She tells me she's going out to see the Lego movie with some friends, and I ask her to let me know how it is because I was interested in it as well. So I drive off, and after a little bit, I text her something like, Hey, I had a nice time. If you'd ever like to go out again, let me know. And I never heard from her again. I find out a year later by chance after meeting her old roommate that she took home a lot of dudes off POF. And it always got really weird, at least by the sounds coming from her bedroom, so maybe I was just too vanilla for her. I seem to have dodged something. Not so sure what, though. Sorry, Reddit, I guess it's not that weird of a story. Story 14. I met a 40-year-old woman on Tinder. I'm 28, but I don't discriminate. She was Chinese, but her English seemed fine enough. We agreed to meet for a date at a bar somewhere in between us, like a 20-minute walk from my place and a train ride for her. So I get to the bar first and order a drink. Then she comes in and sits down and the date begins. I'm not sure if she was like using Google Translate before or something, but her spoken English was next to non-existent. We could barely hold a conversation. What I did get out of it in the first two minutes was that she doesn't drink alcohol. Okay, fine. I have nothing against that, but why not tell me up front when I propose meeting at a bar for drinks? Not the first time I've had that happen, though. So anyway, I kind of panic and also just was not into this situation. So I honestly just straight up asked me if she wanted to go somewhere more quiet. The bar was loud and combines with her bad English I couldn't really understand. When she asked where I said, my apartment, she wasn't thrilled about that. Said most guys buy her a juice when she goes out with them. I was like, okay, sorry, would you like a juice? It's probably just free anyway. So we left and we're basically super awkwardly walking along the street together, looking for a new quieter spot. And then, thank the heavens, she asked me where the train was. So we got to the subway and I basically pointed at it and then dipped out across the street immediately. And this whole situation start to finish was about 15 minutes. Story 15. Asked out a cute girl from one of my college classes. I made her a mixtape with a noted it with my phone number. Made a date to take her out for coffee. Score. Well, not really. I show up to pick her up and she has her friends with her. I don't protest. I get it. I am some random guy who asked her out. She then proceeds to talk nonsense on my car. I drove a hand-me-down Jeep. Her BMW was much better. And I laughed and told her a story about how a cop once let me off with a warning because my car made me look like I couldn't afford the ticket. True story. She was not amused. She then proceeded to tell me how much better Dallas was then than the small town where we went to college was. Small towns, in her opinion, were bad. People from them were stupid hicks, etc. As someone from a small town, I just sort of smiled and nodded. Well, things did not improve from there. I asked her how she liked the mixtape artists I'd put on there. She didn't listen to it. She didn't own a tape deck. Didn't know any of the artists on there. Not that into music, but liked the fact I made the tape. Okay. I mostly sat quietly by myself as the fifth wheel that night. Worst date ever. Story 16. Singapore. Tinder matched with a girl who was in town on a business trip. Said she wanted to fudge someone and film it before we met. I've never had any encounter close to that before and thought, let's see where this goes. We had a drink and some normal small talk. No close relationship talk. After about 30 minutes, I asked if she was serious. She said yes, apparently her BF in Australia got off on her flipping strangers. She was in a hostel and I was staying with a girl who had taken me in, long story. So we went to a park. She insisted on skipping the condom, which I of course refused. She filmed the whole thing on her phone propped up on a bench. The whole act was over in like 10, 15 minutes. We talked quite a bit while walking and stuff, pretty bland and normal Indonesian girl otherwise. When I got home around 1.30 p.m., the girl I was staying with had already drunken herself asleep. She's a heavy drinker. So I sat on the doorstep listening to the rain and browsing my phone until 6 a.m. when we got up. I didn't mind at all, felt it cleared out some of my karma. Day after, the girl sent me a message on WhatsApp asking where I worked again. Got super paranoid that she was going to try to blackmail me or something. Blocked her made all my social media private, and deleted my Tinder profile for a while. Story 17. Met a somewhat local girl I talked to online around 2008, nine or so. She came to my house, we watched some TV and started to kiss, but she was kissing me like I was the last man on earth or something. She stops and says, Do you know when I fell in love with you? It was the moment I laid eyes on you when I got off that train. I was frozen for a moment and say something to the effect of, You don't really know me yet, though. Then she keeps kissing me and says she really wants to go down on me. 
I'm getting the feeling she's getting attached way too fast for me, so I tell her I just don't think it's a good idea, and then she gets upset. We watch some TV and she goes home. A day later, she starts accusing me of leading her on by kissing her. Imagine turning down a blowjob because they prematurely claim they love you on a first date and then being accused of leading them on. I stopped kissing on first dates for a while after that one. Story 18. I was on a surprise date. A friend had invited me to go to the movies with a group of her friends. I agreed. Sounded like fun. She texts me about an hour and a half beforehand that they also agreed to go to Red Robin for dinner before the movie and that I should meet her there. I drive over there only to find her there saying that everyone else canceled and that it would be the two of us. The weird part is that to this day, I honestly don't know if it was, it was planned this way or if it just happened by chance. She liked me. I liked her enough to be not miffed at the situation. She was pretty shy about these things, but I didn't want to act like it was a date just in case she didn't see it that way. The other weird part is that she wanted to see Frozen, a movie that most would say is not the best first date movie, but a she seemed to enjoy it, so whatever. Not super exciting and more strange than weird, but I chuckle a little when I think about it. Story 19, The Accidental Date. The usual group of friends couldn't get together, so one female friend and I ended up getting coffee together. She was very interested in everything I was saying. I was friendly and responsive in what I imagined was a very platonic way. The evening ends, I explain I had so much fun. And as we're going in for a good night hug, I explain that I like this. To wit, I imagine she misheard me and quickly fires off in a frenzy. Oh, you do? I like you so much. I've liked you since we met. And that was how I started dating the awkward girl in our group for about six weeks. Uh, story 20. On a first date with a woman, she tells me she's a happiness coach. She was very nice and sweet to everyone. Very upbeat. Then over dinner, she tells me if you see someone who isn't smiling, then they aren't happy. So many sad people in the world. She wouldn't stop preaching happiness to me. I felt like I was in therapy. Next, she says that all cops are bad. Even if a cop is a good person and is always doing the right thing, they are still a bad cop, simply because all cops are part of the problem. Well, I know an L.A. cop who's the nicest, most stand-up guy in the world, so I'm really getting concerned about this gal. She asked me to bring a list of my top 10 deal breakers in a relationship. She said she's gone over these lists with lots of guys, and no guy had ever told her she failed their list. But she failed the first three items in mine. Strike one me. She must not have any communicable diseases. Happy gal. Well, everybody's got genital herpes. Strike two. Me. Must not have an extreme amount of debt, not including a mortgage. Happy gal. I have $50,000 in credit card debt. Strike three. Me. Must be at least okay with oral close relationship, giving and receiving. Happy gal. Oh, I could never put a man's banana in my mouth. But go down on me all you want. I love it. Strike out. Sorry. It was game over for me. Story 21. Went on a date with a guy. When we met up at the restaurant, he seemed obviously off. I'm not really sure what was going on, but he said he had a lot of medical problems. When we sat down, he said he wasn't feeling well. I offered to reschedule, but he wanted to continue. The date didn't go well. He obviously had a lot of problems, both intellectually and physically. Talked about being in and out of hospitals and mental health institutions. When we ordered food, all he got was a small cup of soup. During the whole date, he kept making puke faces, gagging. He looked like he was going to barf. It was really upsetting to watch and made me nauseous. At the end of the date, he asked me to go see a movie with him. I said no. Then he said he was going to probably leave his car at the restaurant and call an Uber to take him to the hospital. It was super weird. I wasn't sure if he was trying to get me to drive him to the hospital, which I wasn't going to do. He made me really uncomfortable. Sure enough, he asked the waitress if he could leave his car and an Uber got him. Three days later, he messages me saying that he was sorry he didn't respond sooner, but he had been in the hospital for the past three days. Badass. Story 22. College, about 11 years ago. Girl I was hardcore crushing on asked me out. Head to a bar in nearby town. Drinks with her and a gal pal. Some odd things happened. Like they were buying me lots of drinks and I was at like four to one. One was sober cab, so that made sense. Unrelated, a dude totally hit on me. I'm a guy. And said it was because of my hair. Don't swing that way, but guys don't get a lot of compliments, so that was nifty. Anyways, me and the two gals end up at Walmart and they literally try to ditch me. My phone was in their car, so I would have been pretty sole. They ran to their car with me half drunk stumbling to keep up. I had to stand in front of their car as they were pulling out so I could get in. Anyways, the two had a falling out shortly later, and the other gal said they just wanted to get me drunk and laugh at me. No real explanation beyond that. Also, she had me in her phone as creepy Demarja Murad. Needless to say, I didn't date for like eight years after that. Next one didn't turn out well either. Story 23. I remember my first date. I was a late bloomer. I got bullied a lot in high school. Like, a lot, a lot. The very few times any girls showed interest in me, I either got my peach kicked by an angry family member, or the girl herself got bullied so hard for it she couldn't deal with it. This didn't end until after high school, so I hadn't really gone on tilde-tilde many tilde-tilde any dates. There was this one girl I met at a party once. 
We got along splendidly. She spent most of that night sitting in my lap, chatting and drinking with me. We made out, I got her number, and invited her to go see a movie with me the following weekend. We chat once or twice during the week and it's flirty and fun, but she seems to be having second thoughts about hanging out again. I do my best to encourage her to come, because as far as I can tell, things are going great between us. She shows up to the move the following week with her boyfriend. And one of his friends, I'm shocked, I'm embarrassed. Fudge, I was downright stupefied. I had no idea what to think, what to feel, how to react. I just don't know what to do in this situation. So I do my best to shrug it off. I mean, I guess I misread the situation here or something. I don't know. It just seemed like the only way I could avoid making this even more awkward than it already was was to just play it cool and act like this was just a friend's invite. And the more the merrier, right? I don't know. I tried to be all smiles and friendly while we were buying popcorn because, well, people flipping hate me, so I try not to give them reason to. Nobody seemed very talkative, though, beyond basic small talk, and I sure as hell wasn't in the mindset to push it. Watching the movie was mostly just time to process the situation and come to terms with how I felt about this situation. I was absolutely furious, but with no idea how to express it. But I was also devastated and confused why people think it's okay to fudge with me like this. Eventually, I hit a point where I just couldn't stand to be there anymore and excuse myself to go to the bathroom. I kind of just stood quietly in the corner, as still and as silent as I could possibly be, facing the darkest corner and waiting patiently for the tears to stop so I could dry off my face walk through the lobby and get in my car to drive home. I didn't even get through the first step. Without warning, her boyfriend spun me around and threw me against the wall in the men's bathroom. His friend was there too, blocking the entrance or just keeping an eye out for witnesses. He proceeded to tell me what a worthless cow I am for asking out another man's girlfriend. I tried to explain that I didn't know she was seeing anyone, but he was having none of it. He shoved me against the wall again, then punched me in the stomach. It took the wind out of me, and for a brief second I thought about fighting back, but... She'd already hurt me far more than he had at this point, and I didn't have any fight left in me, so I just let myself slump down on the floor. He kicked me once more, and one of them spat on me. Then they went back into the movie. This time I didn't wait for the tears to dry. I just stood up and walked to the parking lot and went home, and that was my first date. It was the first time I'd worked up the courage to ask a girl for her number, where she'd actually said yes and planned an event with me afterward. I'd been absolutely giddy an hour earlier, and on the drive home, I was lower than I had ever been. That's the worst date I never admit to people IRL. Occasionally, the question comes up when people are discussing their worst dates, and my response is, LOL. I went on a date once, who turned up her nose at me the moment she learned my car was more than two years old. Or something dumb like that. Story 24. Went on a second date with a guy who took a call during our dinner. It was his mom. After about ten minutes of casual phone conversation at the table, he hung up and stared straight at me. He asked, do you have a problem with me talking to my mother every day? At that point, I was no longer interested in him and told him, not at all. He spent the rest of the date explaining how binary worked, because I admitted that I wasn't familiar with it. He bragged about how he never cleaned his house, how he had stacks of pizza boxes in his kitchen. It's like he was daring me to judge him. I'm terrible at confrontation, so I just sort of went along with it. He asked me out again, but I declined. Story 25. A guy I'd been having a two-month long distance thing with came to visit me for the weekend. Upon opening the door to greet him, he breezed by me with a, I need to use your shower, thanks. As I waited puzzled for the shower to end, I notice his car still running outside. I go out to turn it off for him, but it's locked. Keys inside, running. Back in the house now, he's out of the shower in a towel, sheepishly asking to use my washing machine. Apparently, the combination of long drive, nerves, and gas station coffee did a number, and he cow himself. That's when I tell him about his car keys. We spend our first face-to-face -face date, him wearing my housecoat, washing poop out of his clothes, waiting for a locksmith. Spoiler, I'm still with him. Story 26. It wasn't a date so much so accidental date. A few months ago, my F-17 friends and I gathered in this one guy's room to watch two of the live-action Scooby-Doo movies. I was relatively new to the friend group. The rest had known each other quite some time. I was introduced to them all through an old DD buddy. So I sat beside the host. We all sat on his double bed thought it was a pretty safe place to sit. The host and I had this odd mock rivalry thing going on where we'd constantly poke and just generally annoy each other. It had only been going on a week or so. I'd met him maybe three times prior to this night, but I guess I got lost in the sauce, so to speak. And throughout the night, we got progressively closer and more cuddly than rivalry with each other. He asked if anyone would like to split a pizza with him, and I said sure. Skip forward to after the movie ends, everyone else leaves, and it's just the two of us in his room waiting on this pizza. He puts on It's Always Sunny, and I ask him to pass me a pillow, to which he responds jokingly, Oh, am I not good enough? So I ended up lying under his arm. I could hear his heart beating a million miles a minute, and it clicked. Wait, does he like me? We ate the pizza, and his dad gave me a lift home. I'd always thought he was attractive, but I simply hadn't known him well enough. 
again, about three times meeting him, to develop any kind of feelings, so I went home that night in an absolute tizzy. I knew that I liked cuddling with him, though, and would very much like to do it again. The next day, we were all supposed to go out as a group, but most people canceled, so it was just the two of us. Weather was cow, so we went back to his house. Ended up in a similar situation to the night before, but we ended up kissing for four hours and became a thing. We're still together, and he's really great. It's funny how a relationship spawned with someone who I barely knew is going better than relationships I've been in where I'd known and crushed on the person for months beforehand. Story 27. Hosted a fourth date at my house with a guy that went from being friend to more than friend. He was extremely hot and the only time I'd been able to punch above my weight class. We hadn't slept together yet, but I figured it would happen that night. I built a huge blanket fort in my apartment living room and put my mattress and TV in it with my gaming console. Guy said he was bringing his graphic novel and comic collection that pertained to my favorite hero. Heck yeah. He came over and was drinking water from a gallon jug, which I chalked up to him being kind of a gym rat and the quality of tap water in our city being poor. We were supposed to get takeaway for dinner, but he said he wasn't hungry when he showed up. Luckily, I ate a big lunch and was on the same page. We got in the blanket fort and it got weird. He kept getting out of the fort every couple minutes to drink water from the gallon and was really restless. His stomach was making noises and I asked if he wanted me to get a snack or order dinner. He declined. Then the smell started. At first, I thought it was my breath because I'm an anxious person, so I excused myself to the bathroom and brushed my teeth put on more antiperspirant. I returned to the fort and the smell was even worse. Then he started sweating, like really sweating. I asked gently if he was okay and if I could get him anything, which he declined. He said he was fine. Before he could finish saying the word fine, though, his peach ripped a mean wind popper. It sounded like a cap gun. He pretended like nothing happened and continued talking about the comic books. I managed to pretend my blanket fort and bed weren't being turned into a gas chamber for ten more minutes. The guy left abruptly and didn't say why. We went on a couple more dates. There were a lot more red flags before and after this. But yeah, he farted my lovely fortress and I didn't get intimate either. It was definitely happening. Story 28. This has a bit of a backstory to it before I get to the actual story. Sorry if this is a bit long. My family does farmer's markets. We are farmers. One of the markets we did was in the evening at the fairgrounds. After each market, we would go to eat at this restaurant that was across the street from the grounds. We did this for a couple of years. One of the workers at one point in us going there would constantly walk past our table whenever we would eat. Now keep in mind, I'm in high school. This man, I would say, is in his mid-late 20s. Flash forward a couple of years, I'm going into my sophomore year of college, home for the summer. Still doing this market, and one of the workers noticed we had some herb plants or something on our truck and wanted to buy. My mom helps them and gives them on of our business cards, which had my number on the back of it. I did not know it at the time. It was a couple of days later, and it's past 9 o'clock. I'm in my bed watching TV when my phone rings. I don't answer since I don't know the number. They call again a couple of moments later. I answer thinking it's my brother, and his phone passed away since he was out with friends. Nope, I was wrong. It was the worker from the restaurant wanting to go on a date with me. He told me he dialed my number so many times, and he just didn't get the courage to dial until now. I reluctantly said yes and went downstairs and yelled at my mother, and she just wanted me to have a good time this summer, and I'm like, I don't need a guy to have fun. A couple of days or a few weeks go by, and we go to a local baseball game, college guys in a summer league, with my parents because I was not comfortable with going out with a guy like 10-year-older with me. So we were there, and my parents sat behind us. It was awkward as flipping hell, but I also didn't really care because I was not into it one bit. I went out with him in spite of my mother for what she did to me and trying to set me up with a guy. She felt horrible afterwards. I tell her, don't do it again. The guy also told me he has liked me for quite some time, and I'm thinking, dude, I am 18. You have been crushing on me since I was in high school. Yeah, no. Story 29. Buckle up. So this girl I was talking to on a dating app started getting super close relationship after a really short time. Super dirty stuff. She invited me over to her house, and me, being young and horny at the time, got in my car and drove one hour to her house. When I knocked on the door, her mom answered. She let me in and introduced me to her father, her husband, and some little kid. The girl showed up looking nothing at all like her photos, wider. And before I had time you say anything to her, the parents offered me dinner. I then sat at the dinner table and had dinner with this family who I did not know at all. The food was takeout chicken, you know, BBQ chicken. There was clearly not enough for all of us. So the mother gave me all the biscuits and gravy. That's all I had. Everyone else had delicious smelling chicken. They served warm, flat diet cola. The entire meal, the girl I was supposed to be banging, would not make eye contact with me. The father put a slice of American cheese on his chicken at one point. At no point during the meal, they asked why I was there or any other real questions. They had a normal family conversation about bills and light politics. To my absolute horror, when the meal was done, the mother told us to all go downstairs for dessert and a movie. Keep in mind, I am like 27 years old. The movie was Walt Disney's The Black Hole. The father said it was his favorite movie. And of course, we watched it on a tiny color TV on a VHS cassette. 
I notice as we are getting our seats that's the girl is nowhere to be found. I'm sitting alone with strangers watching this jank peach Disney movie. After about 15 minutes, I make an excuse to use the bathroom. I figured I could dip out and get the fudge out. I asked if I could use the facilities and the father tells me it's upstairs. I make my way upstairs and sitting in the kitchen is the girl on her phone. She just stares at me. I still remember all the chicken grease on her face from the meal. I did a tight closed lip smile and yeeted my peach out the door. When I got home, I discovered she blocked me on the app. I deleted the app. Story 30. A batchmate of mine won't stop asking me out. I successfully evaded him for about four years. He was a good guy but couldn't understand boundaries or so I thought. Anyway, I just thought I should get it out of the way for once and all. So I told him that we can get dinner. He wanted to pick me up from my house. I didn't want to give him any idea, so told him that we will meet near the restaurant. We needed to park a bit further from the restaurant. While we were walking towards the restaurant, we passed a bridal store. There were a bunch of bridal gowns in the window. He looked at the gowns and told me that I would look so beautiful in the gown on our wedding day. We reached the restaurant. It was very awkward. He started asking me how many kids I wanted and where would I prefer to live after marriage and stuff. Mind you, this was the first time we met in person after four years. While this awkward conversation was going on, he got a call from his dad asking how his date was going. We both are 25. Then after some time, his sister called and asked the same thing. He wouldn't even go away from the table to talk to them. Apparently, he thought that the date was going great. I'd made it clear that it wasn't a date and that I would pay for myself. So when the server brought the receipt, he wouldn't take out his wallet. I pay for both. After the server went, he told me that he would give me a check for the amount he owed me. I said not to worry about it. I thought, this is it. I can go back home now. But no, he had to walk me all the way towards my car. There, he tried to hug me and plant a kiss, which I had to get away from. Just as I reach home, I get a text from him. It's a picture that I posted on my Instagram two years ago. The text along with it said, this is the best picture you have till date. I knew I liked you way before, whatever that meant. I couldn't even come up with a reply for that. Story 31. I was 15 and my sister was 17. The local farmer's sons were interested in taking us on a double date. Oh, I so didn't want to go, the younger son. My date was a weirdy fellow who sort of jumped everywhere. As I loved my sister very much and she really wanted to go, I went, fudge me, big mistake. We walked to their farm and as we approached, my date came bounding up the path. Big jumps and strange air kicks all the way. He jumps up and down and tells us where we are going. We're all going to see their super duper excellent chicken farm way across town. Chicken farm? Yes, chicken farm. So we get in their vehicle and holy cow again. It was an ancient, ancient Jeep thing, I think. I do bloody remember it had no flipping doors and a ripped black tarp for the roof. Seatbelts? <laughs> Only losers have seatbelts in their cars, eh? We drive across town, my sister and I scared to flipping death by the older brother's flipping crazy donkey driving. They both jump out and the younger brother grabs my hand and says, come on. We get to a massive, massive metal barn type thing. And like a magician, he waves his arm and oh, holy cow again, he rolls back the door and there it is. Rows and rows and rows of chickens, stacked floor to ceiling. It was a battery farm. They took us to a battery farm for a first double date. The noise was so awful, the smell too. But oh God, the chickens, the poor little chickens, I wanted to cry. I think my sister sort of did at one point. They both run in, down this massive aisle, stacked so high with unhappy clucking chickens, shouting for us to follow. We don't fudge. This is the most disturbing thing I had ever, ever seen in my life. As we won't go in, they start to bring chickens out for us to hold. My sister realizes this is all too much for us, asks to leave. They say they have one more treat for us. Please don't go. We foolishly agree and are taken to a farm supply store where they bought chicken feed and new buckets.